Well, we've done it. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Garden America, those on BizTalk Radio. This live remote broadcast from uh, John's estate. <laughs> and that would, be, that would be my phone now that's uh, feeding back, I think. Or the, uh, there we go, the uh, computer. So we've got the, uh, hopefully, the, uh, the bugs ironed out. Although I've never ironed a bug, John, have you? <laughs> no, but this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, this, so far, so good. You know, for those that are kind of in the know when you set up things like this, when you're away from the studio, we've never been here. We did not do a pre-setup. We didn't test anything uh, beforehand. We tested it this morning at about uh, 7.15, 7.30. So far, so good. And uh, we trust that uh, those on Facebook will let us know exactly how things are sounding and how we look during the course of the show. Tiger, thank you for the setup. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's neat to be able to kind of change things up. You know, we, we talk about gardening, always pushing the boundaries of what you can and can't do and taking on new uh, challenges. And I think this is right up that same alley where this is right. something new to us, taking on a new challenge. I know we've done remotes before, but, you know, being here in John's uh, library is a little bit different. It's actually, I think, to some degree, a little easier because we're inside. We're not having to deal with outside noise or and the weather, cords right, the elements. And the weather, but um, it's a wonderful place. Thanks, John, and for I, inviting <laughs> us here. And you didn't even. You're welcome. I, and I get two more hours to work today. It, <laughs> yeah, he's I don't still have to in drive. his pajamas. Yeah, yeah, John didn't have to make the drive. We have a comment here about a very cozy uh, table set up here. Yeah, we are cozy. We are closer to each other now than, we, yeah. than we've been in years. <laughs> I know normally you're all the way across the board. Right. John and I have a little bit of room, but to figure we get the shots nice and tight in here, so that way it's easy to do the I, show. I think Daniel uh, posted online, who remembers what a library is? <laughs> right. What it, what it even looks like. Yeah. yeah. Now, John, how old is the oldest book that you have in this library? 1838. I was that was my guess. 1838. Yeah. That was it, my guess. <laughs> it was the Rose Fancier's Manual by uh, Mrs. Gore. And we all know Mrs. Gore. Do you right? remember how you got that book? No. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, like it was. But I've I've collected books for many years, and. Uh, but I mean, was this was this like you think like an eBay thing? Did you used to go to like antique book uh, shops like? It was more likely, more likely online. It could okay. have been eBay or it could have been uh, uh, Abe Books, mm -hmm. A-B-E did Books. Did you get a good deal for it? Uh, did, the person, <laughs> did the person even know the value of what they were selling? Probably not. You know, books are so inexpensive now. I have um, the New York Botanical Illustrated Encyclopedia of Gardening. I think most of us have that book. All t <laughs> I, well, it's ten <laughs> volumes. So if you only have one, you're missing nine. Nine. M missing the nine volumes. But... Each one of those, when they were first printed, was, I believe, over a hundred dollars, like a wow. hundred and ten dollars. At and the time, that was massive. Oh yeah, it was a lot of money yeah. back then. And I went online to search and see uh, if you could still buy copies. And I think I saw the whole set online for twelve dollars. Wow. You know, <laughs> in, twelve dollars. Yeah, in very good condition. You could buy individual volumes for like four or five dollars. <laughs> so but why is it important to why why do you guys think it's important to still have books when everything's on the internet well i think it's a different feel you come in here you sit down you relax you can there's nothing like thumbing through books uh taking a book off the shelf putting it back checking something else you know i think it, it slows you down i think when you're online there's a tendency to go a little bit faster and and you know you're dealing with technology None of that exists in this library in terms of, of a, a real hometown feel. Well, my, my theory, um, who was it that wrote 1984, Orwell? George Orwell, Orwell yeah. right? Okay, Orwell's quote, 1984, was um, he who controls the past, past controls, controls the, the present. And then he who controls the present, present controls, controls the, the future, future, right? Right. And books are a great way to look at the past in the sense of where we've came from and knowing the information like like so in a modern era information is there but we don't know where it came from and books give us that look back into where like like volume 10 yeah the reason why there's multiple volumes things have changed and how things are done and how people know things over time and i feel like books are a great way to know our past yeah, the reason there was volume 10 was because it was alphabetical. <laughs> Went from A to Z. Or, or what, not volume, it's uh, revision 10 or yeah. whatever. What but they? you know, this also gives Second you an... Second edition, yes. third edition, yes. tenth yes. edition. This gives you an atmosphere you're not going to find online. 
Right, but this Tiger, on the ambiance. Tiger hit on what I thought was the main point. I, I don't trust the mm -hmm. internet. Yeah. Something I remember, I was looking up a quote one time, uh, and I can't remember the exact quote, but it was from Liberty Hyde Bailey. And the person who first posted that quote posted it incorrectly. And it got copied over dozens, if not hundreds, of sites incorrectly quoted. And yeah. when I looked at it, I thought, this just doesn't make any sense. And I have the book that it originally came from in the early 1900s went up and I said, oh, here's the real quote. This makes a lot of sense. And the same thing with um, uh, misinformation. Somebody can post on a blog how to prune and give you something that's totally wrong. Yep. And it just gets copied to other websites, other blogs. Well, everything on the Internet's true, John. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that's where the information comes well, from. And, and now, now they're not even going to be mistakes are going to be AI generated, right? Right, right. And it, because and it's going to be the information AI gets from right, right. that was fed into the AI. There, right. And, and exactly. It's, it's wrong. I don't think AI is going to use books. <laughs> so anyway, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, and, and also everything is not even on the internet. Mm -hmm. A lot of information in these books you're mm -hmm. not going to find on the internet. I don't um, think you're going to find anything from Mrs. Gore on the internet. No, <laughs> not at all. Do we even book. have a, a picture or a painting of Mrs. Gore? <laughs> No, but you know, back then there were no, there was no photography. It there was no just, color photography. Right, it was just right. in its infancy. So the front piece in the book is a hand painted uh, uh, sheet. It's amazing what they can do. Yeah. It looks like a photo. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, so a lot, a lot of good uh, reaction to our uh, setup here this morning, guys. Tiger, nice job getting us set up in terms of uh, the audio and all the technical stuff. And um, we're looking at the the broadcast right now with the, the books in the background. And, uh, yeah, again, any questions, any comments, uh, let us know on Facebook. We'll do our best to keep up with it. Do Somebody have? commented that they don't see one clam. Yeah, there's pictures. And well, there is the, the um, anthurium. anthurium right there. Brian moved it out of the way. <laughs> I can move it back if, if you need me to. I have I, a vase of sweet peas that I picked. I do. I will in. say that, yeah, I, I am kind of disappointed with the lack of houseplants in your garden library, John. But my book <laughs> behind us, Plants for the Home, Volume yeah, 1. Yeah, exactly. Is there? Uh, no, I, you know, I don't do house plants anymore. Yeah, ever since you gotten off that itch. You, you know what? Gave it up cold turkey. It, it's yeah. funny. I, I've mentioned many times that, you know, we have the, um, as, good as, we can get, as good as we can get silk plants or fake plants because of our cats. Because they want to chew everything. You know what? Still doesn't stop them. No. I, I said, hey, you realize that's not a real plant. No. Okay. What you're chewing plastic? What are you doing? Get away from there! It's not real. They don't know what plastic is. They don't. Yeah. Hey, do are you, you, are you gonna, time before the quote of the week? Yeah, are you going to monitor the questions, John, on your phone comments? Uh, I have. Yes, okay. I have some so far. Uh, all good comments. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes until the first break. Uh, we are also recording this for our friends on uh, Biz Talk Radio, so we will take our normal breaks according to the uh, program log. But again, a very quick break on Facebook Live. And the quote of the week's from H. P. Lovecraft was kind of a weird person. <laughs> I mean, well, he, the, the name itself is a bit different. Well, he Lovecraft. wrote some, yeah, he wrote some uh, eerie novels back in the uh, twenty or yeah, in the twentieth century, and uh, he wasn't really a science fiction writer, just an odd writer. <laughs> but anyway, he had this quote, and he said, "I couldn't live a week without a private library. Indeed, I'd part with all my furniture and squat and sleep on the floor before I'd let go." Of the 1,500 or so books I possess. Wow. You catch it, that? Squat and sleep on the floor. He, yeah. he would rather do that. Than give up his books. And that quote uh, made me want to figure out how many books I have. I have more than 1,500. Do you? Do you know yeah. how many? I, I stopped at like around 1,600. Did you? Yeah. Just wow. in, the, in this room? In this room. Because and this is all your books? I know that for a no, period of time there was some in storage. There's still. still some in the garage. Okay. And then every every uh, cabinet you see here is loaded books. with books. Did right. you set up this room by yourself? Yes. Yeah. It took how it's long? His. I mean, from the time you moved in to put everything to well, you where know, it I is. I have to admit that my wife and my daughter occasionally will come in and rearrange things. <laughs> Not the books, but they'll put <laughs> little nicks yeah, on And that's and okay. But, I mean, in terms of putting all the books away, setting up this room, yeah, because the books is uh, maybe we'll have time to go through it later. The books are set up by themes, 
So behind you is uh, is the camellia section, and there's, you know, who would think there'd be one book on camellias, let alone ten? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And uh, and then I've got uh, trees are all together, succulents, uh, S stories, gardens, yeah, yeah. stories, uh, stories about yeah. A lot yeah. of do, now. Lot. Do, do we have this ladder in any shots? Because Gina says, "Can uh, Brian push Tiger on the ladder?" <laughs> oh yeah, that's happening later. Yeah, and, that, and it's that's going to happen, Gina. Oh, here, I can move it in in a minute. We're going to. Yeah. Are we going to take a break here in a second? Uh, we've got break? actually. You know what? It is perfect. It is break time. Right. Thank oh, okay. you, Tiger. We're going to take a break for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. For the rest of us on Facebook Live. Yes, we are broadcasting live this morning from John's Library in beautiful Fallbrook, California. We'll take a break for messages on Biz Talk Radio. Stay with us. Okay, we are back from the break, a bit longer on BizTalk Radio, so thank you. And again, those on BizTalk Radio, of course, you're listening to audio only, but if you ever want to watch uh, one of our shows in studio or on remote like this, you can go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show, every Saturday morning, 8.06 on the West Coast, Eastern Time Zone, 11.06. You can interact live and uh, watch us just like our many Facebook uh, viewers and listeners are doing right now. And again, thank you for the, the very nice comments that we're getting as we broadcast live from John's Library. So John had asked us to browse his book collection and try to find a book that, that reached out to us and kind of maybe we were going to talk a little bit about it today. And the reason why I picked this book out is kind of like what we started the show with as far as the importance of books and how it's taught us so much, how they've taught us so much through the eras and how things have changed over time. And one book that I grew up with um, being a nurseryman in Southern California, I think every nurseryman in Southern California, John, this was this was the Bible. You any garden center you went into, they had this at the front counter. Right. You would refer to it. You would you would look it up the plants because we didn't have Google. You know, um, in Southern California, also there weren't a lot of books. I felt like East Coast gardening. There's Hortica and a lot of other right, books. and a lot of the books were written overseas right, right. so and therefore did, the information was right it was it was not uh, mediterranean type climates so the sunset western garden book was put out by sunset magazine and it was specifically designed for west coast right by the and way in the article i wrote in the newsletter this week i mentioned that when i moved here from michigan in 1977 <laughs> I got a copy of the Western Garden book, and every night I went to bed reading, and it took me a year, Yeah, but I read the entire book. But And you probably learned so much that was way different than Michigan. Oh, yeah, that's that's <laughs> why I had to do it, because I was in charge of a garden center, and, and I had no idea what the plants were. Yeah, so this is John's earliest version of the Sunset Garden book, and it's a 1940 edition. Wow. Okay. So this is a 1940 Sunset Western Garden book. 83 okay. years old. And wow, I geez. would say I used not this particular book, but new editions of this book up until probably early 2000s before the Internet really started taking you off. You know, that book is so old. It was printed nine years before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of books that can say that. You can right? say I, I was printed before John was born. But I mean, you know, up until the early 2000s, we used this book at the Garden Center for reference. And I remember the last edition mm -hmm. they put out, I was really annoyed with because of the way they switched the, um, just the way the book was laid out. And also they made a lot of references to online stuff. So therefore, they didn't have all oh, the information. Oh, like, like you yeah. used to find every bit of yeah, knowledge you right. needed in the book. And our buddy Lance Walheim was an editor for oh, them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know what they were trying to do at the time. Right. They're, they were moving to the internet. Yeah. Well, but, I meant he was an editor for the older ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. yeah. Probably not the internet one, yeah. though it's possible. But um. So, and and I mean, just back to books is, through the years, I mean, the the biggest thing I think that was in the Sunset book 
was it had specific zones oh, for yeah. our region. Right. Exactly. And USDA zones were went from uh, 1 to 10. And very vague right. in their region. But regions. Sunset had 24 zones. Just for like... Now, were those zones within those zones? Yeah. Well, they were, but they would break it down. For instance, uh, uh, USDA would call San Diego Zone 10. Okay. Okay, but within Zone 10, Sunset had right. Zone 19... 20, 21, 22, 23, and not all plants would grow in all zones. Right. And then they'd even break it down into like 23A, 23B for some of the things. And it's because we have so many microclimates here in the West Coast with the mountains, the coast, the deserts, and all of that. I mean, I think Kansas could be classified as one zone, all the whole state. You know? Right. Where, yeah, where, exactly. You know, just in San Diego, we have 10 zones. Well, you, you have the beach, the coast, you have inland, yeah. right. mountains, and deserts. Right. Each one different. By the way, I quickly want to remind people not to tune out and to stay tuned because we have a surprise for Brian coming up, and it's not just him getting to push you on the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the, the ladder in one of our shots, so it's an actual library ladder. Yeah. And our friend uh, Jan in Brentwood says she has magazines and catalogs in her library, which mm. I do too. And as a matter of fact, Brian, I don't know if you can reach that magazine behind you because, no, the magazine. Oh, oh okay. This it's an old comic book? <laughs> no, this is a copy of Flare Magazine. And Flare Magazine was put out by Fleur Coles. It came out for one year and then went bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> but her, I've talked about her before because there's a rose called Fleur Coles, which I discovered in at the San Jose Heritage Rose Garden. And when I saw it, I thought, wow, that's so beautiful. What is it? And I had never heard of the rose before. So, so I took a cutting, started one. And then when I got home, I thought, you know, that's a weird name, Fleur Coles. Because Fleur is French for flower. flower. Coles, I had no idea what that was. But then I found out it was a person's name. And she was a fas fashionista from the uh, mid 20th century and was married like four times. And her husband was the editor of, I think it was the a Post magazine or one of those magazines. And she thought, being a fashionista, she thought I could do a much better job. And she said, I want to put out a high-class magazine. So she started Flair Magazine uh, in January, went out of business in December. But it went out of business because she did cr crazy things for the time. <laughs> Yeah. The first thing she did was, um, you guys will have to show, but like each cover is a cutout. And the one that Tiger's holding is the May edition, which is the Rose edition. And inside the you book, she put would. Put your face in here, Brian. And <laughs> then you can be. Exactly. There we go. <laughs> that magazine is over $100, so be, be, be careful. You can it still. Says it says it's 50 cents. 50 cents? Yeah, that's more. More now, it's uh, inflation. But within in the book, too, she had uh, little inserts, like that one right there is a book, is an insert called The Flower of Flowers About Roses from Catherine Ann Porter, who wrote Ship of Fools. And on this particular issue, there was no scratch and sniff back then, right? So she uh, put rose oil on each magazine and put it in that plastic bag and shipped wow. it out to people. You know what? It sounds like the reason she went bankrupt is because she was putting a lot of money into all these oh, yeah. quir quirky features. Right, and the magazine was double the price of any other magazine sure. out at the time. But it's really, really interesting. She would have articles from Salvador Dali, Winston Churchill. It, it was amazing. She lived to be over 100 years old. Um, uh, she wrote some flower books, too. And the... On the uh, mantle on the behind us is a painting of the Fleur Coles rose over the fireplace. And that rose was, uh, painting was done by the artist James Noble. And I found this in the uh, Totteridge uh, Gallery in London and was able to get that as a Christmas present. <laughs> wow. We're going to take a break. We have to stay on track for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. So uh, back after these messages, as uh, they say. And I'm going to get your present. Oh, I'm well, sorry thank you, John. No, no, you're good. Okay. And uh, again, thank you for joining us as we broadcast live on remote Fallbrook, California, 
from the uh, John Bagnasco Estate. Back after these messages. Okay, welcome back to John's Library in uh, Fallbrook, California, located right here in Southern California. We're about an hour or so from downtown San Diego, just to give you an idea for those that are listening and watching out of state. Uh, back in the library, uh, well, actually the first time in the library, but we're back after the break in the library, Tiger. That's what I, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> a lot of library talk happening. A lot of library talk. Carla um, wants to know if Shannon's going to peek in to say hello. <laughs> She she can. We, we can ask her. Ask but, her by the way, she does make the, the largest cappuccino, cappuccino <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, thank you, Shannon. Very good. By the way, in front of you, Brian. Yes, right in front of me. Is a gift for you from uh, Jan that we were just talking about up in right, Brentwood. Right, right. And it's the George Burns Rose. You're kidding. Wow. No. You're kidding. Have you, seen nice George, have you seen George uh, yes. uh, Burns in Bloom? Yes. Got yes. a little cigar that smokes. <laughs> yeah, little glasses. Well, hey, thank you very, that very is much. A I'm good touched. Rose. And I not only touched. that, it's grafted on Fortuniana, which is a really wow. strong root system. So no disease, means, hopefully. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with disease, but it makes the root rose grow more vigorously. Okay. So it'll you'll probably have double the the uh, amount of blooms you used to have. And just uh, the perfect time of the season, too. Yeah, yeah. It's you already got a, a bud on yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Wow. It has a couple buds on it. Yeah, it's yeah. vigorous. It's that whole, uh, uh, what'd you say, John, the grafting uh, that's uh, making it uh, grow vigorously. Do you have a pot, an empty pot? I no. do. I do. But soil. Yeah, yeah exactly. It does I got, I got soil. plenty of soil. I got frog soil. I got happy frog. Yeah. I've got uh, fox farms. We're, we're in good shape. We're set. Nice. By the happy way, the tomato is doing well. Yeah. The uh, sugary. Right, sugar, not no bloom yet, but I can see it. It's just in a week, yeah. the, the I mean, growth is good. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. That's cool. Well, that's see, awesome. thank you very much. I am touched. I haven't had a George and Burns rose in Jan? probably fifteen years. I know, I know you, and you can't get them anymore. Wow. Uh, Jan wanted you to know that it's VID two, VID indexed, which means virus index, so it will not have virus. Oh, you heard us talking yeah, about you. Exactly. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah. That was it. That Did was, you look? That quick? was it. That's the cameo. Yeah. <laughs> she, she wasn't even in the shot, and now there she races out. <sighs> that was good. Yeah. Um. So it was what VID? VID, VID again, John? It means virus indexed, and it comes from um, the. Uh, God, I'm trying to think of the uh, the college up north. The my mind just Ag went. College? Davis? Or? Yeah, UC Davis. Yeah? UC Davis um, uh, goes through and they virus index roses because once a rose gets a virus, if you take a cutting from it, 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 will. it, it yeah, it propagates to all, all the future roses. So they yeah. go through and they clean them up and make sure that there are no viruses in their cutting stock. And uh, you, can, you can get cutting stock from them to bud roses with. And you got me a Chrysler Imperial. That is VID. Oh, I really? Remember, yeah. That would have come from the same exactly. place. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I remember you telling me that story. I was like, you, you know, because it was a Chrysler Imperial Rose, and I was like, that doesn't seem very John. Right, Chry right, right. Which Chrysler, is why I gave it to Chry you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chrysler Imperial isn't a very uh, rare or unique rose in any which way. And so I was like, John, why do you have, why, why is this even in your, in your, you know, galaxy of roses? Yeah, your repertoire of roses. And he said, oh, because it's, vid and right. this is the special part of this now, rose. what's the background of that name because i think of a big Which car 
Virus? Chrysler? Chrysler? No, no, Chrysler, <laughs> Chrysler Imperial. Oh, yeah. I, I think of a big car. That's what it was named after. Really? Right. So it's that obvious. Yeah, okay. and that old. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, fragrant. Yeah. Um, so, cool. Fun rose. Yeah, thank you so much. This will be, uh, trust me, in about a month you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of blooms. It'll be well taken care of. Oh, you can send a picture into the, to the newsletter. Absolutely. Right? What about that newsletter, What's John? in my garden? We'd like to remind you to go to our website, GardenAmerica.com. Every time you click, it does help us. Uh, you can see uh, a lot of good information. It does change, reg change regularly. And uh, speaking of that, uh, you can sign up for the newsletter by going to GardenAmerica.com. GardenAmerica.com. We appreciate it. John must have been getting a little toasty here with your back. A little and warm, John? <laughs> well, just the... Uh, just the fan was on, so oh. it's just blowing hot well, it's air. Quiet now. It's, it's not quiet anymore. It, yeah, yeah, it's quieter. I can turn the flames back on in a few minutes if you really miss them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do so we have any questions? Are we caught up on uh, some of the reactions here on Facebook? want to make sure we're not ignoring anybody. Jan wanted you to know that next is going to be Gracie Allen. Wow. <laughs> I'm speechless. I know. Wow. George and Gracie. Say good, yeah. night. Say good night, Gracie. I'm just taking a look at all these books behind me, and I'm sitting right behind in front of the bug collection and tree collection right now. And, you know, it, it's such a neat, you know, section of, of you know, bugs for, for mm -hmm. plants. I mean, I feel bugs go in the same category as why somebody would become a botanist. What is that? Ent entomologist. 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 Yes. It's kind of the same thing. It's because they are always hoping to figure out a new name for a bug in some kind of new class. But there's so much that have been found already that they just can just keep revisiting. It's know, easier ones. to find new bugs, though, than it is mammals, for instance. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I always felt that um, my heart education was lacking because I was majoring in accounting until my senior year in college. <laughs> and then I switched to horticultural marketing. But because of that, I, I only took hort courses my senior year. And so I was able to get a four point and raise my average so I could graduate with honors. But I couldn't take all the hort co courses I wanted and I missed out on entomology. Really? And so that, that would have been fun. Well, yeah, I yeah. always felt that I really didn't know much about bugs because I missed out on that course. Instead, I took plant systematics, which was taxonomy, oh. which I think helped me more yeah. than entomology would have. Yeah. Because uh, I knew, got to know more about plants rather than what kills them. <laughs> well, it's funny because, I mean, there's a lot of bugs out there. But, I mean, on one hand, you can name really the bugs that you need to know. You know, the aphid scale mealy bug a, cater bugs. a caterpillar and chewing white insects fly. <laughs> <laughs> you know anything above and beyond that scale did I, I thought i said scale oh, did you aphids scale right. mealy bug Those a are caterpillar and white fly L leaf miner yeah leaf <laughs> but even leaf miners aren't that bad citrus leaf miners right but i mean you know they're they're pretty bad they're pretty bad <laughs> yeah. but in terms of other places, they don't have that because we live in right. California and, you know, there's not a lot of leaf miners on the Midwest. No leaf majors either, from what I understand. Oh, well, really? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> I have um, 1,500 roses out there. and Yeah, during, we're going to go out and count them all <laughs> next uh, segment. Well, during the summer, you will not find an aphid anywhere right. on the 1,500 roses, and I don't spray at all. So I think when you get your garden in balance, there's really very little you need to do. Maybe if you have a specific problem that you need to take care of. But or, or like the, like a, a big infestation where, you know, they've created a problem, like you're saying, like a specific problem. But then yeah. a lot of times that could just be spot treated. And right. you're, you're and a lot of those problems um, are caused because you sprayed. <laughs> because yeah. you killed the beneficials right. that would use them, uh, use your uh, insects as a source of food. Once those are dead, they just take off. Yeah. Um, Although, you know, where people live, where they have the fire ants and the mosquitoes oh, and gee, yeah. all, all that stuff, the, the only thing they can do is just spray. Yeah. Right? Because 
I mean, we live in a, an area where mosquitoes are a problem. Like, they're not fun. But I wouldn't say every night that I walk out into my backyard, I get bit. No. There's places that people live oh, yeah. where if you walk outside. You've got 100 bites on you. Yes. Seriously. And then, you know, with fire ants, if you are in your lawn or in your garden, you're dealing with them. Your kids right. are getting bit by them constantly. And like, If I lived back east, I would not grow roses. <laughs> Because they've got rose rosette disease, they've got black spot, they've yeah. got uh, Japanese beetles. It's just like deer. Yeah, why bother? <laughs> John, we got questions and comments, don't well, we? Well, we have one comment that somebody's really excited. See if you can guess who this is. Their comment is, "Oh, great, another plant for Brian." <laughs> <laughs> oh, would that by any chance be my lovely wife, Dana? Yes, it is. Oh, great. No, it's your cat. Another plant. <laughs> it's your cat. Yeah, one, uh, one of the three cats, exactly. Uh, Bandit. Let's Bandit see. wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that one of the names? Yeah, yeah, he's the older one. Yeah. Is that the one? He's that the old man of the you? house. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. bit me. Bit you. Yeah, the, yeah. The, no, I missed Carla's comment at the beginning of the show. I said, she, she says, uh, please go back to my comment at the beginning of the show if you get a chance. I want to know where your smoking jackets and <laughs> pipes are, guys. <laughs> right? right? Yeah, where are those, John? I mean, I uh, yeah, we should have had pipes here, huh? See yeah. the cigar box over there in the corner? Is it? They're Cubans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we should take a break. We're getting very close to break time for our, our network affiliates, BizTalk Radio. So uh, obviously, stay with us. If you have any questions, comments, right there, we are monitoring. As we continue our broadcast live from John's Library here in uh, Southern California, San Diego, uh, most notably the Fallbrook area. Speaking of uh, zones, within zones, we are from Fallbrook. This is Garden America. Okay, we are back. Uh, those uh, tuned in on BizTalk Radio, this is the final segment of our number one. We are back at uh, six minutes after, and you'll be uh, enjoying your news broadcast, top of the hour, followed by the second hour of Garden America. I think the most uh, famous garden library, garden library that I went to is the Henry Miller Library in Big Sur. Have you ever been there? Yes. No? no? It's right off the 101, right? Yeah. And you, if you drive too fast, you'll miss it. Because it's, it's on the right-hand side, woods. and there's a restaurant, I think, and a library. Mm -hmm. It's a couple of two or three stories. Now, is that in the Tropic of Cancer or Tropic of Capricorn? I don't know. <laughs> I think he probably is wrote that the same Henry Miller. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, really? absolutely. I'm surprised you're not aware of that. Yeah. Right there, it's right by Big, Big Sur. I it's think I've heard it. It's in Big Sur. Bert, yeah. uh, Bert, uh, Bruce told me about it. Yeah, I think. So. and it's kind of it's kind of tucked but it's away. It's a garden library, huh? Well, I would say it's a library that is very themed in garden so it's a small house set in the redwoods mm -hmm. and um people just uh, i guess pilgrimage there it's like a little tourist thing yeah you stop exactly. you pull in get and, a bite to eat and they have books is and there kind of like a little museum there there's too? a little museum right. and people play music it's kind of like a artsy hippie, artsy commune artsy, kind of artsy. Thing too. i'm looking but, at tiger as he says and they have books yeah <laughs> and they're kind of like do you have the proper respect for books, Brian. Do you have books? <laughs> you know, you open it up, you turn the page. Yeah, but um, but um, you know, I just picture when I when I think of a garden library, that's what I kind of envision. Yeah, exactly. It's sure. In the woods, you you feel in, like you're in a cabin, mm -hmm. and um, do you so, remember Cicero's quote? No, the quote from Cicero that. Uh, all a man needs to be happy is a garden and a library. Oh, boom. It's pretty much true. Yeah. Henry Miller was right there then. <laughs> yeah, that was Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Yeah, that was. Henry Miller might have brought in the third thing a man needs to be happy. <laughs> but we don't have to talk about that right now. <laughs> hey, Paula mentions that the Fallbrook Avocado Festival is tomorrow. What? Have it a, is a hundred thousand people will descend on Fallbrook. Really, that usually yeah. only has fifty wow. people. Well, yeah. there's only fifty thousand people, maybe not even fifty thousand, like forty-five thousand that live in Fallbrook. So it more than doubles the the size of the city. And you said you haven't gone in 
ages since your kids were kids, right? No, Shannon and I went last year. Oh, did you? I thought I remember you talking about it. You didn't want to go. Well, (laughs) when we came back, our our we thought the same thing as um, this is why we don't go. (laughs) (laughs) It's. It's, it's it's mayhem, yeah. like, right? I it mean, is. it's cool. It's kind of like going to the, the San Diego County Fair. It's yeah, but, you know, it's become over the years the same thing that, um, uh, to me, the same thing that the uh, home spring oh. garden show is, uh-huh. where it used to be a lot of gardens, and now it's just home renovation. I just right. did two commercials for them yesterday. Did you? Yeah, and you're, and you're right. They've, they've kind of gotten away from the – Right. The horticultural aspect. Yeah. Right. And they, there used to be all kinds of garden centers there. You could mm-hmm. buy plants. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's still good if you're, especially if you're remodeling or yeah. building something new. Yeah. Buying a jacuzzi. Uh, I was yeah, trying, right. Exactly. Right. Joyce uh, says she has two squash seeds that sprouted. What's the best way to move one? Oh, if they're just sprouts, usually it's pretty easy. Yeah. And usually you don't start squash seeds indoors you start them where they're going to grow and when you plant them in the ground so it'd be the same thing if you did start them in a pot uh, usually put uh, anywhere from three to five seeds all together and you you don't separate them you plant them together Mm -hmm. so the two seeds you have Joyce go ahead and just put them in the ground together the plants will grow fine you don't need to separate them like you would tomatoes or peppers or or something like that. And why would you um, keep them together? Pollination, or just because? Yeah, pollination is part of it, yeah. and then um, and they just grow in in a huge. Each one's going to produce fruit. You don't right. need to. I guess it's part of a space thing. Okay. Hmm. They used to say plant them in a hill, and hill was an old word for uh, just one area. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not a mound. Not a mound. Just on the hill. Because right. no. yeah. people would always plant them in mounds, and then when you watered or it rained, just, they, yeah. looked, they had a wash flat. <laughs> it's like, what's the point of this? Yeah. And strawberries, they always planted in a hill, too, or a mound. Here's a, I don't know if I'm getting too far ahead, John, from Tony. What is the series of green books on the bottom shelf to my right? Oh, underneath the um, oh, ladder? Oh, I, I see, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Oh, there's Tony. Do you know what those are, John? Or does uh, the, Brian need me look? There's two co- two color greens. There's an olive green, uh, but the dark green is the New York. Let me grab one of those, Brian. Mm-hmm. All right. If you, Brian, if you were to have a library, would you do music? Oh yeah, I think yeah. Like books about music or books about music, books about artists. Uh, the history of, of music, history of rock and roll, from the I would go from the forties to present day. Yeah, yeah, that would be and just chronologically. Uh huh. So right, John, got, the John? the book in question is this is the one we were talking about earlier. Oh, the ten volumes, right? Right. That's the uh, New York Botanical Garden Illustrated Encyclopedia of Horticulture. Probably the most thorough reference that I can imagine. Oh, wow, look at these photos. Lots of pictures. There's a lot of pictures. We're off to a good start. There. Right, and if you go through. <laughs> <laughs> it's a picture book. Good for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just would read it for the articles, though. Uh, the uh, information on any plant that you can think of is in there. And so thorough, it's unbelievable. I've never seen a reference that was this good. And that's the one that I told you. Each volume was over a hundred dollars new, but you can easily get each one under ten dollars now online. Wow! Well, look at Anthurium, Brian. It's from the Greek Anthos. What okay. Is that? You know what Anthos is? Flower. In Greek. Yeah. Flower. Oh, okay. And the aura tail. The so, aura tail. Yeah, it's a flower tail. Mm-hmm. That's the other nice thing about that is he will tell you what each botanical name means. He translates the Latin or you the say Greek. He yes. It's just by Thomas Everett. Right. Oh wow. Hey, it is a uh, break time. We've got to stay on right. uh, on time for our network friends on BizTalk Radio. 
You've got news coming up top of the hour. We're back at six minutes after. Hopefully your market carries us. For the rest of us on uh, Facebook Live, those on Facebook Live, the uh, broadcast continues from John's Library here in Fallbrook, California. Stay with us back after these messages and news coming up on BizTalk Radio. Okay, welcome back. For those on BizTalk Radio, welcome to hour number two. For the rest of us uh, on Facebook Live, we keep on rolling right along as we uh, are enjoying time away from the studio today, broadcasting from John's Library here in Fallbrook, California. So welcome one and all. And again, uh, on remote, but we still take your questions, your comments, uh, anything you might see, as uh, most people are, as far as pointing out books. So we'll do our best to zero in on that and uh, give you the information that you're asking about. By the way, uh, Tony was asking the question about what books those were, and I also thought we should notice that uh, Tony saved the rose that uh, Modern Roses 10 says is extinct, uh, Lemon Chiffon. Well, that's right, yeah, we And was about able that. to uh, get Budwood, so we were able to offer one in the auction last week, and it went for $400. Wow. People obviously knew the background. Right. Yeah. And we actually had two roses go for over $400, and those were new records and sales. And then, um, when I say record sales, I think of you immediately. Yeah, <laughs> right, record sales. Uh, that's the same as books almost, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, it's funny because records are becoming back in style. Are becoming, they? I yeah. have a record player right there. And, and uh, I guess a lot of younger people now, it's, it's, uh, it's the thing to collect records. And then, you know, get a record player yeah. and, and play it just like the old days. Hmm. So uh, also um, coming up at the uh, – there will be another one in the auction for the National Convention of the American Rose Society. So we were able to get – and then I'll keep one here. So oh, very good. This plant that was supposedly extinct is now going to be back in the garden. So thank you, Tony. Yeah. We appreciate that. And so – also, you, do you encourage, or do they have a way, is that the, the help me find roses? Because that helps you guys document where roses are. Right. right. If you register that you have one right. on help me find, in the future, if somebody's looking for that, they can say, oh, John has lemon chiffon. If right. I want to reach out to him. Lemon chiffon, now you'll find out that it's here. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's see. You pulled up some books here in front of us. This is volume giant, six. I know. What, what is the other volumes? Wildflowers of the United States. Oh, I, I got this. There's. I, I didn't want to bring them both <laughs> over here because there's also four more volumes. But I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to show how much information. You will never find the information in those books on the Internet. Yeah. There's... Uh, Five volumes to, let's see, there's one I think, I'm trying to think if they're separated uh, by East, Eastern and Western. But anyway, um, you can get as detailed as you want is I guess what I'm trying to say. If you're looking for a specific subject, you can find books on that, that specific subject. 
No, this is always a map. Okay, of, so that's the west. This is where the um, right where these flowers, wildflowers are. This was just wildflowers. Right, in just that particular area. So if you go in another volume, you'll find the same kind of thing. So basically that's all the weeds growing in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> I that's got a, fun. I got a couple other books. Uh, this this book is a probably one, written by one of the most underappreciated uh, horticulturists in our our lifetime and, and I know that so? you're a you're a big fan of this person Beverly Nichols right right and he yeah we got a lot of quotes this is an week. original copy but his copies were re, uh, copies of some of his gardening books were reprinted and garden open today is one that I'd recommend you go online and find because you'll be reading that book and you'll just burst out laughing He's got that English uh, dry sense of right, humor. Okay, right. And it's hilarious. He was part of that whole group of uh, Noel Coward and Oscar Wilde. And, uh, but he was not appreciated in England. And the reason that he wasn't appreciated, I think, was because they considered him a master of, a uh, jack of all trades, master, master of none. Of none, okay. Because he just got, you know, it was hard for him to focus on anything. He would hobnob with royalty he would uh, uh, go to garden shows he would write he would do a little bit of radio just do all kinds of stuff but anyway that book that book is great and then another book that I, I've mentioned on air several times but the world was my garden by David Fairchild is um, Probably, I would say, one of the top ten books I've ever read in my life. Bible would be number one, of course. Yes. <laughs> but taking that out, uh, The World Was My Garden, uh, The Travels of a Plant Explorer by David Fairchild. Um, I gave that book to a Hollywood producer once, and he told me that that was the most important book he ever read in his life. Really? Yeah, which surprised me because I just thought he would enjoy it. And I'm not sure what that is in there. Is that it in says, there? obtain the book from the person whose name precedes yours. Oh. So you're supposed but to write your name in here. You should have been the last one. And then what's this up here? Lucille Root? She Charlotte Vermont? Something Root? Do you know well, what, what that is, John? No. It's oh. probably the person who owned the book. You used to well, always used to write your name in right. your book because you used to loan them out and you wanted people when they opened it up to remember, oh, I got to give this back to so and so. Okay, now my a question to you. We talked about roughly sixteen hundred books in here, roughly. Roughly, yeah. Have you read every book? I've touched every book several. You've touched times. every book. Have you? Have you? How many? Seriously, percentage wise, how many books have you read in this library? From cover to cover. Now let's just say perusing even a chapter, even. Uh, probably every one. Okay. Yeah. But, but not or close to everyone. No. I wouldn't know where to start. a lot of them are reference books, right? It's just like if you have a dictionary, you sure. kind of read yeah. it from cover to cover. I wouldn't know where to start. Well, I guess I would start left and work my way right. Right. You <laughs> have to do it that way because I do not use the Dewey Decimal System. You don't. Should we, I climb on the ladder? Yes. And just get a shot oh, for people? Somebody wanted to see you pushing Tiger. Okay. Was that, wait, I think that was Gina. No, it wasn't Gina. It was someone else. See about setting up this shot here. Where is it at? Oh, yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to get a talk. Yes, John. Oh, so, oh, because people can't hear you way over <laughs> there. <laughs> this is really cool. Usually I swing across. Yeah. And then it comes, and we got the rug here, so I'll show you this. See, now Tiger's taller than both of us, so he could reach much higher, but there's no way I'm going to get up to do books on that that high level. I usually put books up there that I don't use as often, and plus some of Shannon's books are up there where no one's ever going to see them again. Uh, behind you, Tiger, it's not on the... Mystery League Baseball? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good book. Do you, re do you remember the Vertisserie Leagues? They don't have yeah. those anymore, no. do they? No, no. Yeah. The... Uh, Behind you, where the computer is, are all the rose annuals from 1916 
to Take it off the when phone. they stop printing. Back to all shots, Tiger, and back to the shot right now is uh, the roving camera. Veronica says her most priceless garden book is one that was written by Bruce and Sharon Asakawa. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I didn't know if it went off or not. Yeah, I'm watching the uh, – it's a little dark right now. There uh, we go. There we go. That's a little better. Rick wanted to mention that uh, since we are academic today, he wanted to mention that his nephew is attending – the number one botany school in the world. Really? Yeah. Which is what? Uh, what's the name? You can well, you know, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It, it looks like uh, uh, Wagenhingen. Oh, Wagenhingen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Begins with a W, doesn't it? Yeah. Wagenhingen. Oh, Joyce had mentioned... waiting for a signal here. The, shot, the roving camera. Now, Lance Walheim sent me and notes for his do have his picture of his one. library, by the way, was a great picture. He's got a superb library, it looked like. What, what was this? What is this? That's group? Luther Burbank's uh, set of uh, gardening books. And they're kind of collectible. And did you say that he also had a set? Yeah, he was proud of his set. Correct. Yeah, oh, we're getting a little, little uh, frozen on the audio. Or, I'm sorry, the video. But that gives you, gives you an idea of uh, some more of the library. We should be good. Uh, Lila wants to know if I have a book on plants in the iris family. You know what? We're going to take a break, and we can answer that question on the other side okay. when we come back as uh, we take this pause, uh, this break for these messages and our good friends on BizTalk Radio. Stay with us. This is Garden America. Okay, welcome back. Those on uh, BizTalk Radio, I hope it was a good break for you. Uh, those on Facebook Live get a chance to, to watch us in between breaks as John gathers even more books. And uh, we continue our broadcast from John's library here in Fallbrook, California. Tiger? I do just want to mention, if you're listening on BizTalk Radio, I know that this um, episode might not be too great in the sense of audio for you. There's a lot of visual elements. A lot of but, visual, but yeah. But please go to our, our Facebook, go to our YouTube channel. You can always re-watch the show. Hey, good and point. And you can get those visual elements later on um, because there's a lot of really interesting things to see here. We're trying to do our best to share sure. exactly what's happening, what we're talking about. But at the same time, I mean, if you can go to the YouTube channel, go to the Facebook, all the episodes are um, archived. archived there. Right. And you can just... I think, forward, I think your best you bet would be, would be uh, YouTube because uh, th it's the edited version. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit through the very beginning on Facebook before the oh, show starts. Yeah. So it's uh, Garden America Radio, Garden America Radio Show on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, like and subscribe. We're, we're increasing our subscription almost up to 200, Tiger. Wow. We're in All our right. infancy, but we are growing. So, again, that's a Garden America Radio Show and our YouTube channel. And Tiger brings up, brings up a good point. Whatever you missed, you can watch there. So, John. Another book on roses. Well, I thought I should point out a good reference book. If somebody wants the complete book on roses, uh, and it's probably something you can get online fairly inexpensively, uh, Tiger mentioned you can go to Help Me Find and find out online and find a lot of information. 
But Botanica's Encyclopedia of Roses, uh, with a foreword by David Austin, is probably the most complete and the, the best rose book that uh, an amateur or a collector could go ahead and get. I mean, there's a lot of specific books that have been written, but this one here would be uh, a really good reference. Also, um, I wanted to get to bring this book because this is a, um, a book of the roses in the Finesky Rose Garden. And the reason I wanted to point this one out was in the, in the beginning of the book is a preface, and it's written in five different languages, I think. Let's see where. Oh, also, so this one is signed by Professor Finesky. And there's only oh, yeah, the 10 of these. Presentazione. The <laughs> <laughs> there's only 10 of these books in the world right now. Really? Uh, in this condition. Should I have not put my coffee on it earlier? Yeah, okay. Preface. Preface. Yeah, okay. There's, uh, these are, there's five different languages that it's written in. There's Italian, there's French. Say there's that one right there, Brian. That's, <laughs> that's German, isn't it? Probably. Oh, in yeah. Furgrum. See, I can say that one. I'll say Prologo. <laughs> in, in Furung, which is, I know I butchered that. Oh, wow. Okay. W, w P R O W A D Z. All right. Z -E now stay on that page. That I one I wanted to point out because it's written in Polish. One and I, I when I first saw that book in Italy, I asked them why they had a Polish translation because that seemed odd. Yeah, I don't yeah, know any. Is. I mean, usually you would find English, right, and then maybe French, Spanish, Italian. Yeah, right. The, the, but the, usually not the big Polish. languages, right? Yeah. And I was told that that translation of the preface was written was translated by the Pope, Pope John the Twenty Third, I believe. And the reason that um, the Pope did that for Professor Finesky was he was the surgeon who saved the Pope's life after he had been shot. Oh, wow. Do you remember that assassination? 1981, attempt? right? That one? Yeah. Okay. So I, uh, at the time, I said, you know what? If you can autograph 10 of these copies and send them to the U.S., I will put them on auction, and we'll send you the proceeds to help your garden. And after he told me that story, I said, you know, if you could get the Pope <laughs> to autograph these, we'd get a lot more money. And at the time, he said, you know, the Pope is so ill now, no one even gets to see him anymore. Um, he said, and I said, oh, I understand. I, I thought it would be a long <laughs> shot anyway. But what he did on that page the Tiger was just showing you, he cut out a picture of himself shaking hands with the Pope. Right, And right. pasted that into those 10 volumes. Yeah. Which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, there's a little there's a little picture here with him with the Pope. It's neat. <laughs> uh, Kevin yeah, where is, are we, John, on well, the comments? Kev, Kevin's giving me some good advice. He says I might want to fill in the upper shelves with knickknacks or fake books just to fill in the space. No, <laughs> he's leaving that room for adding to his collection. No, I, well, I've got a lot of things to, you know, I told you how everything here was organized and cataloged, and I just haven't had a chance to fill everything up yet. How about some hanging vines, John, just don't lightly over the books? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't, I'm not into How about it. some creeping fig that can attach to the books? <laughs> did, you notice that, did you notice this bar in front of us in case he wants to move the ladder? Yeah, no, they all have oh, the bars. Yeah. I just, you, just you now noticing it. Yeah, yeah no, I've, it I'm either, late to the party. It was either that for his ladder or that's how he does his pull-ups. I, mean, I don't know which <laughs> wow. one. Uh, you can take a look at me. <laughs> it's to, you can tell it's to move the ladder. So, so when you were building your house, your library, where do you begin when you want to uh, investigate the idea of getting a library ladder? Is this very common? A library well, yes, ladder. The guy right? Who, you just Google library ladder. But, I, but I'm <laughs> saying you just don't go down to your local hardware. Don't go to Home Depot. No, and, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Library ladders. No. We asked the guy who built the library, the cabinet maker, if he could do a library ladder and he said oh yeah absolutely also oh, custom obviously yeah and he said oh he says this would be fun because he doesn't get doesn't do a lot of libraries wow. anymore yeah. yeah i knew it wasn't something you just go buy right. you know right and um yeah and then just assembling it and uh, it 
that's raw wood so the wood had to be stained and and each piece had to be finished there's a lot of as you look around the library you'll see a lot of uh knickknacks and things you wouldn't normally notice right for instance on the one drawer under the the record player the leaf handle is that a leaf the, the hand it's a rose. rose a rose okay yeah, it's a rose with a bee on the flower so little there's little touches like that 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 probably i'm the only one that would ever enjoy no but, no i, I but, like stuff like that but it adds to the character of where you're at and i mean i'm sure you use this library for you know your enjoyment to of get away. these books is this where the newsletter is created created <laughs> that, <laughs> that's on his couch. it is right at <laughs> emulates that computer. from this from this uh, library yeah. the computer and emanates not what, emulates. what did i say <laughs> you said emulate oh a like copy like copy yeah, okay you meant emanates. <laughs> emanates. Right. Yeah. um carla says does kendall get to play on the ladder when oh she gosh visits? yeah i know the stories <laughs> yeah and gina says yes and my dad gets so nervous yeah. <laughs> i don't really get nervous i just say kendall don't don't, don't play with the la the ladder. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what would be more fun as a kid is to get on oh, that and get are pushed you kidding? off. Well, look Absolutely. how much fun Tiger had when you were pushing. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, I mean, I'm sure when she visits, she loves to just put her books up on the top there so that way she can go up every time to get her books. We're going to take a break uh, for our good friends on BizTalk Radio our network affiliates across the country. Do stay with us. When we come back, we have uh, two more segments, guys. As wow. we broadcast live from John's library here, it is Garden even America. We haven't reading yet. I'm Brian Maine, John Begnasco, Tiger Palafox. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Okay, a little behind the scenes right there. We have returned on uh, BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live from John's library. As we continue, two more segments, this one and the uh, shorter one, which... We'll wrap up the show. John, comments, questions. Where are we? Tony wants to know if that's a yellow Capo de Monte rose on the side table to my left. And An the answer is? The answer is yes, Tony. Good Very eye. Very good, Tony. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, uh, Tony wanted is it you. Really? Or are you just yeah. saying? No, it no, is. Yeah, right there. there. Yeah. It, it, it Tony like also mustard. wants to know if you can show her the rose section. Um, is it right behind the chair? It's that section there and that little piece behind the chair, okay. but it's mainly that section over and there. And we will we will but keep an eye on the video. Yeah, because otherwise because it may freeze, freeze up again. But we'll try. We'll Tony. give it a shot. And uh, Lila wanted to know if I had a book on uh, the Iris family. And yes, I do, Lila. Aren't they aren't they your next door neighbors? <laughs> Lila lives in Poway. No, the Iris family. Oh, the Iris family. <laughs> yeah. John and Betty Iris. That's funny. Okay, there we go. She Tiger, go ahead, John. Oh, go ahead. Do you want to narrate this tour? Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is the rose section here that Tiger is uh, getting a shot of, and it looks like we're we're good. The uh, the video is holding up. Right, and then the the very top shelf is all the uh, rose annuals. And then uh, the part you didn't see, there was another part that kind of duplicated that all the way to the right. Anyway, a lot of rose books. Lots of rose books. More rose books in this room than other books? Yeah, than any other yeah. category. There's, um, now, now I'm getting nervous the same way that I get when Kendall is playing on the ladder with Tiger grabbing my Pull, books. Pulling books down <laughs> and, and hope that he puts it back yeah, where he found it. In the right area. Kevin wants to know if there's any bird books. Yes, there is. There's yeah, a, good question, Kevin. There is a section on bird books, and I think there's even is, one with birds of the South Pacific. Is that ornithology? Yes, it is. Okay. I found the iris book. Ah, there well, you he go. He has the iris family. You know, I have two of them, too. I, uh, that's not the one I was thinking of, but that's probably the one that Lila would be most interested in. Hmm. I think Claire it, Austin. Yeah, that would be easy to get online, too. Hmm. 
I suppose we could go through and start uh, opening up. Presents? Do we have presents to open up? You already opened <laughs> your present. Tiger hasn't. The, the reason why I grabbed that one rose book was I was. How did you, you know, zero in on that? Well, yeah. it looked like an old book. It was and, old, right? And and it was old. And I'm thinking there can't be a rose book without pictures of roses, right? Like I mean, right? Because the biggest reason why you have roses is the beautiful blue show what and, you're talking about and, and all of that like it's very difficult i feel to have a rose book if you're not going to show pictures of the roses sure but then at the same time at that age of books right you know that they're not in color so i just was interested to see what they had so it was paintings of of one okay that, that, that makes sense that right yeah. Paintings. yeah well now that you bring that up uh you guys, you guys I, I, peaked, I peaked. I peaked. I peaked John's interest because yeah. in you know. I mean. I mean. In general, any plant book is going to be difficult to have without photos, without pictures, without something showing. Because you know, it's not too often that you can have a book that just. Well, gardening is, is very visual. Words. So, so you do want to see, you know, what the written words look like in a picture. Uh huh. Absolutely. Exactly. So. Um, you know, I'm sure that was something very difficult. I mean, as I was looking through the, um, you know, different books that John's brought out and, you know, the, the, the world is my garden, the dairy, David Fairchild, he's got photos of mm -hmm. his travels and where he took photos. He has this one photo that was, and it says in the description of the photo taken by the author right before his arrest in Croatia, I think, or something like that. And it's just like, it's just funny yeah. to think like, there he is in Croatia, about to get arrested. And well, he yeah. was also one of the first people to use micro or macro photography. Is it macro or micro? I think it's macro. Macro, where he would take pictures of insects, but to get a close up back then, you had to have a lens that was about right. two feet long or three feet long. Wow. So you'd have these things set up to, to photograph. Un unlike the picture of the bee that I took that we posted on Facebook. <laughs> right. <laughs> with I mean, iPhone. With the iPhone that got right, right down into his yeah. world. Right. So I was going to show you um, uh, what people did back in the 1800s for pictures of roses when you didn't have color photography. So you can see... Yeah, paintings, drawings, watercolor maybe in some aspects. Right, you can see the types of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, artwork that mm -hmm. they did, botanical illustrations of each rose. And then also at the same time were these trading cards from Will's Cigarettes. Oh, my gosh, really? In England, and they were, these are, I think, from 1918. Something, trading cards look at these i know something caught my interest too on the painting that you have above the fireplace right what, what was that paint the significance of that painting that's the floor coles rose okay and it was done by james noble who is a botanical artist and then this one here on the cover of this book the beauty of rose the rose by henry curtis the water droplets on the leaves yeah now I mean, to some degree, I mean, why put a water droplet on a leaf for You're a painting? You're drawing a picture of a, of right. a rose. But um, was that like a common thing to try to get? I mean, to try to make it look more realistic. Ah, yeah, okay. Because there was no photography, so to make it look as yeah. real as possible. Maybe if you put look a at bug some. bug or a water droplet. Yeah, on if you it. look at some of the paintings from the 1800s, you'll see, you know, like a fly on something. Yeah. Uh, trying to just recreate uh, nature. Actual, mm -hmm. an right. actual photograph. Right. Okay. But they didn't know what photographs were. Yeah. So. <laughs> but um, these cigarette cards, you know, not only is there a picture, but if you go on the back, it tells you about that particular it, it's, rose. It's like a baseball card. Yeah. Well, that's what they were used. Yeah, they were exactly. used as trading cards. Back in, I don't think kids today would be that interested in, in uh, trading rose cards. Have you gone through this collection, and do you know which roses are still around and which roses are not? Yeah, I of these trading I, cards, and I haven't organized it yet, but a lot of the roses I do have. Really? Yeah, because they're some that need preserving, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are probably extinct also. And but then, then again, we're not really sure 
if a rose is extinct, or you, well, you just can't find it. No, like Tony, cemeteries. Tony had lemon chiffon. You know who mm -hmm. else had it? Right. I'm, I'm sure there was another one in the world, but no one knew where it was. Nobody, nobody stepped forward to let us know. Right. I'm trying to. I think I lost. Oh, look at here's a rose. The same rose by two different names, British Queen and La Reine Elizabeth. <laughs> Very right? good, like, I mean, Yeah, right? it's supposed to, you know, yeah. Premier. I'm trying to think if I recognize any of these names of these roses as we cruise through these cards. Ophelia, um, We Miss Quinn, National Emblem, Jesse, uh, the Queen Alexandra Rose. Oh, that was in. Uh Oh, Queen Alexandra. We had Alexandra in the uh, auction last year. Oh. This is fun. Lots of fun history here. Yeah, really. And, and so are you still collecting things, John? I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming once you're a collector, you're always a collector. But how do you... It's such a... It's so much more uh, nice to hear the word collector than hoarder. <laughs> hoarder? Yeah. yeah. But I'm, I mean... I'm a collector. How, how are you collecting things nowadays? Are you actively searching the internet for things that you might want in your collection are you mostly just friends yeah. and family that know you kind of get you things well i'm focused on uh getting my garden in now uh, right L tiger's uh helping me do that once everything is planted i'll probably get b back to collecting more mm -hmm. but yeah i had different uh knickknacks that i would be looking for and always try to collect before something becomes popular. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the hard right. thing is or uh, after something. after it's not popular anymore, like and nobody know, wants it. Yeah, like if you want Beanie Babies now, <laughs> <laughs> you can get them really cheap. Hey, we're gonna take a break. Oh, we have uh, one more segment coming up. Uh, this break, of course, uh, for our Biz Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening each and every weekend here as we broadcast live from John's Library, Fallbrook, California. Uh, about an hour from downtown San Diego. Do stay with us. One more segment coming up on your weekend, on your Saturday. This is Garden America. Okay, we are back. Boy, sorry to say, this is our final segment as we uh, broadcast live, live remote, Fallbrook, California, the Bagnasco Estate here, John's Library. John, you found some more books that somebody inquired about? Well, Tony mentioned, um, and we were just talking about paintings of roses or botanical illustrations before photography. And remember, uh, we've talked many times about how the Empress Josephine tried to collect every rose in the world and that uh, during the war between England and France, if the English knew that a ship had roses for Josephine, they would let it pass the channel rather than attack <laughs> the ship. And um, Josephine had um, uh, Ray Dutay, Pierre Ray Dutay, paint every rose in her garden. Wow. And that's what this is. This is, And Tony mentioned she also has a volume of that. With the roses of Josephine? Every rose that was in her garden. And at the time, she wanted to have one of every rose in the world. So I think there's 167 botanical illustrations. So, so back then, we're talking 1800s? Seven, yeah. Okay. 1700s. 17, yeah. yeah. So, so you talk about these ships that had roses right. for her. Right. How, how would they transport them in terms of keeping... Were they seedlings? Were they what? What are we? How? What are we looking at here in terms of keeping that rose alive? Well, to some, get to that destination, some would probably be in pots that they would water, mm, okay. like uh, William Bly when he was uh, transporting breadfruit. You know, those were all Captain kept in Bly. Pots. Yeah, Mutant in the Valley. Right, yeah, that Captain Bly. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> uh, one of the reasons he was mutinied was because they needed water and he was watering the breadfruit. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't care. Mr. Christian. Yeah. So every one of those is an uh, accurate botanical illustration. And some of those roses, we only know they exist because of these illustrations because they're extinct. One of the things that always fascinated me about that was the different leaf types of roses uh, back then. And most of those roses are gone, but there would be like the peach-leafed rose, the willow-leafed rose, the lettuce-leafed rose, uh, and which is still around. That was uh, uh, Bulata. And each leaf on the rose looked like a lettuce leaf, yeah. kind of a crinkled, big, fat lettuce leaf. And you mentioned botanical correctness when it comes to the paintings. Right. Were, were there certain things that they had to incorporate into the style? Like I noticed some of them have thorns, some of them don't. Um, you know, well, the, if it was the quantity of leaves. Yeah. If it was scientific, it had to have everything. You would have... Uh, uh, almost the way that you would set up. Uh, again, my the <laughs> word's gone, but where you know where where they would put the uh, roses on paper, mount uh -huh. them, and dry them, mm -hmm. herbarium. Okay. The same way you would prepare a specimen for an herbarium, except they would have to have a drawing of the flower, of the leaves, of the seeds, of um, the stems, the thorns, close-ups, part of every part of the flower was right. all, all included. So that way they on a scientific, knew right. if they ever had to if, reference it. If you had to identify a, a plant, that's what you would look at. Yeah. John, what are the dimensions of the library that is from Sue? <laughs> Roughly. Oh, well, I have no idea. It's a bedroom. I would say... Um, uh, yeah, it's mean? actually... In the original plans, this was a bedroom and an office. So this is 20 by 20, I feel, and then that's maybe like 12 or so by 12. That's my feeling. Close. That's my feeling. 12 to 15? Yeah. Well, those are three-foot shelves, right? So you mm -hmm. got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 24 feet. Long. Okay. And then 12 yeah. feet wide. Yeah. Hope that helps, Sue. Something like that. <clears throat> and Tony also mentioned that she had the Vintage Garden Book of Roses, uh, and she brought it up because there's no pictures uh, in a lot of these, but there are full-color photos, too. So it's just as a catalog of names? Yeah, and the reason that I brought that is I think it has more information than any book out there, and uh, somebody told me that they've been able to find a few copies online, but the only ones listed on Amazon were $700. Wow. And hmm. I, th I think when they came out, Greg was selling them for 15 or $20. Wow. Let's see if we can catch up on questions. Yeah, we've today. got uh, just a couple of minutes. Really? Yep. Wow. A lot of people are having... Oh, Lila mentioned that the Maya Lee rose she got at the auction is blooming. Wow. So Lila has seen something I've never seen. That rose, that rose in bloom? bloom? I've never, uh, yeah, I've never seen that rose, and that was an extremely rare rose um, by a breeder that never had wide distribution. And the only person I knew that uh, had the plant, it, were you, Paul Jerebek was the breeder, by the way, but Freedom Gardens in Ohio was the only source, and he's always sold out. But I was able to trade him budwood and Got, got one of those. I, I have one here, which I hope will bloom soon. But I'm really glad you got that, Lila. Oh, and yeah. don't let it die. Or Share a picture. Carla says, do I pull weeds or buy bookshelves for the living room today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, tough. Tough call. Yeah, very tough call. Yeah, what you can do is pull <laughs> weeds while the sun shines. Yeah. And then do, do the shelves. And do the shelves. Yeah, at night. When the sun goes down. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way my day is organized is that I do out, outside stuff during the day, and then when I can't work outside, then I work inside. You have more daylight this time of year, though. Yeah, lots, I of, do, lots yeah. of time to work outside. Oh, I know. We've, you develop a routine, <coughs> especially as you get older. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, I hate surprises. I hate spur-of-the-moment things. Shannon knows if she wants me to do something that she should tell me like three or four days ahead of time. Yeah. Because my first reaction is always no. <laughs> 
Because you already they, thought about what well, you're because, doing. Wait, right. John hasn't had time to assimilate it either. Yeah. yeah, and so as I think about it, if I have a couple of days, then it's yeah. okay. Yeah, sure. But, yeah, I, I have every moment planned out, and it just irritates me to change. Guys, but that's that's going to do it. What? We're, yeah, we're up against I've the clock. I've got a lot of things I want to talk about. Well, we can we can uh, pick this up next week in studio. Yeah. How All right. about that? Well, we'll talk about something different, maybe. Thank you so much, those that are tuned in on Facebook Live, yeah. those on BizTalk Radio. If uh, those on BizTalk Radio want to actually see this show, go to our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. It'll be posted. Uh, by the time you get this or hear this broadcast, it'll be posted. So for the entire crew, I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Pella Fox, and thank you to all of you. Thank you all for tuning in and for uh, writing those comments and asking those questions. And maybe sometime uh, we'll do it again here in John's library or a remote someplace else. This is Garden America. See you next week.